Hey everybody, we are here with the cast of One Night in Miami, which is blazing through the awards scene. And we're here, going to talk a bit about that, but first about the film. I'm Tom O'Neill with Gold Derby here with my colleague Rob LaCuria and the stars, Eli Gore, who pay, plays Cassius Clay. We have Leslie Odom Jr., who plays Sam Cook, and we have Aldous Hodge, who plays Jim Brown. Um, the genius of this show, of this drama, is that we know that all of these very famous people were there that night uh, when Sonny Liston went down to Cassius Clay. We don't know what happened, and so that gives the dramatist a chance to uh, take the dialogue wherever he wanted. But I would like to know what you would have done if you personally could have been in that room with any one of them, maybe somebody shoves you in there. Uh, uh, maybe you stumble in there. Uh, maybe, however it works. But if you were among these few men that night, what would you have said? And maybe specifically to your own character. Hmm. And in, in other words, and, and to complete the thought, you could say, yes, we're in, uh, America's racially divided now and sexually divided, and there's a drug revolution going on, and there's a sexual revolution going on, and on and on and on and on. But in our case, over, over, over race, things will get better. We're going to have a black president someday. Would they have believed you? <laughs> and then even if they had believed you, would you could you then say, but the storm won't be over because a few, min a few years later, there's going to be a thing called Black Lives Matter? Yeah, no, I think I think what if uh, you were yeah. part of that conversation, <laughs> you know, if, if I was part of the conversation, uh, I would ask uh, coming from my perspective, uh, what they would think of the times today and what they would do to help us fix where we're at, because, you know, things have progressed. But, you know, yes, we have a black president that doesn't fix the problem. Um, black Lives Matter is uh, a, a movement of necessity out of uh, the the current state of times. Right that became something because our priority for protection was being ignored consistently. So we started crying out. And then what you see is more people continue to cry out on our behalf and in support of us. And you see this whole universal global movement, which is beautiful, that shows love is greater than hate. But have- All this is screen has frozen. Who wants to pick up his thought here? I mean, I can't pick up his thought, but I will say that I also respectfully disagree that having a black president um, in any way reflects the more general issues and systemic issues that black people have faced. I think we've always had anomalies. You know, there was a time when Sidney Poitier won an Oscar and then it took another 30 years before another person won an another black person won an Oscar. Uh, you know, we've had great leaders in the black community that have been able to overcome and transcend the racial boundaries um, for forever since, uh, you know, since Booker T. Washington. Um, but that has never meant that the, the grander scale of systemic racism has been addressed. And that's really what I think um, w what they were meeting about at that time and what we're still fighting to overcome today uh, is that is that bigger scale. in many ways. You know, we have made some progress in certain areas, but in many ways we've digressed in many areas. When you look at the criminal justice system and the types, the numbers that we're looking at of black men, you know, being force fed through that machine. And when you look at, you know, the unity that existed back then, we don't have anything like the Black Panthers today. You know, we don't have anything like the, uh, you know, we can we're now starting to get things again like the bus boycotts that were back then, like, you know, even like the nation of Islam at that time, obviously the nation of Islam still exists, but the type of um, interaction that it had in the black community and the type of impact that it had, you know, there was a lot more unity within the black community, I think at that time in many aspects than there is right now. And so, and, and that's largely due to a continued attack through drugs being put into our communities through negative imagery and uh, systemic, uh, you know, um, stereotypes uh, being force fed on our on our communities through um, a lack of, you know, proper educational, uh, you know, support and health support and, you know, so many different aspects. So I definitely think that they would be able to 
they they were I think if anything they were worried that this is where things might be and they were trying to get to a better place than what we've gotten to today um because these are the types of issues that they yeah. talk about in the film they say that you know he talks to Sam about how there's always you know one black guy who manages to get a, a, you know who manages to break through but at the at what expense and, and and at what cost they talk you know these are all conversations that we have in the film um, which resonate very clearly to the times that we're in now, you know, so um, I definitely think that they could have envisioned where we're at today. I think that they would have had a lot to say about how we need to take greater strides. And I think they had a very powerful vision for what they wanted to see. I think, you know, now that Aldous is back, I'll let him take it back. But economically, I know he has a lot that Jim wanted to see uh, and, and still wants to see our communities that still hasn't been realized. So Aldous, I, I'll let you Pick it, pick it back up from there. The internet doesn't want me to be great. <laughs> it's good. It's, it, uh, it's like, I don't know, weather and we had some outages going on in my area. But yeah, as I was saying, um, the fact that we have to ask uh, certain questions about progress, uh, you know, people say, has it gotten better? The fact that we have to ask, has it gotten better, means it hasn't gotten better. We don't, we have never in this country seen real equity. We, we, this country doesn't know what that is when it comes to universal equity for all cultures um, in this country, especially as it pertains to black people. Right. So we haven't seen that yet. The goal, the dream has not been accomplished. So there's still a lot more work to do. And I think that their take on it for right now is, uh, if anything, would be like leading us towards what that work is. Or the question might be, why hasn't that work been done and why hasn't it been accomplished? And it's not for lack of trying. It is for a means of continually being held back and those ways that we are continue to be uh, that, that are continually used against us to hold us back. Those ways are graduating. You know, I say systemic racism and suppression has only evolved to what is culturally appropriate because at a time enslavement was culturally appropriate. It has changed in its execution, but is it really gone? I don't think so. So we got a lot of work to do, but not just black people, white people too. They're here. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a race we beat together. Yeah. So we've got to get hand in hand on it, man. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if there's much I can add to what my brother said. There's really complete answers for sure. Rob, what's you know, what next? You know what? Yeah, you know what, Tom? I was thinking when I when I spoke to Ken Powers, the, you know, the, the brilliant man who wrote this play and then obviously wrote this script, he said that, you know, the, this film's prescience actually fills him with a profound sense of sadness because you long for the day that this film can be a time capsule because it's about a certain period of American history, a very profound part of American history. And yet it should represent a far off time and feel like mm -hmm. it's not written like a response to something that's happening now because it wasn't. When it was produced in 2013, it was considered prescient. When it was in London in 2015, it was considered prescient. And again, this was made before 2020. And yet when it opened at the end of last year, people couldn't stop talking about how prescient this film has, has become. So I'm wondering when, when I when I see you guys talk about this film and what it means so passionately, like no kidding, like it, it feels like it just keeps, history keeps repeating. And I'm wondering when you're in that room with Regina and you're trying to film something quite um, profound and intimate, was that stuff ever really occurring to you guys or was it more just about trying to find the the truth and authenticity in each moment i'll go to you first leslie yeah i think we had such a um, such an incredible blueprint from kemp about what he wanted to say and and to me um you know my my job was pretty simple you know it was just to, to honor what what he had written and to um you know, to to do my best to try to touch the bar that Regina was setting for us, the very, very high bar that she was setting for us. And this was just, um, this was um, adding to the canon of images of black humanity and what we've made here, what we have, um, what we have made uh, for ourselves here, what we what we continue to build for ourselves, um, but there was something about 
the nature of the script that I, I recognized as daring. There was something of daring about it. It felt like uh, it was, this was a conversation we'd never ha had publicly. You know, I had really never seen a conversation like this publicly. So it was, it was something private that Kemp was daring us to share, daring us to share more of ourselves in public. Um, and so that, uh, that requires a little courage and taking up a little more space. Uh, so, so it was exciting, uh, but, but I, yeah, I wasn't bogged down uh, too much thinking about um, the sadness. I wasn't even really thinking about the, the year that followed that evening, you know, because tragically we bought, we lost both Malcolm and Sam within a year of that night, but I wanted them full of life in that room. This is a moment of celebration. There's, you know, there's, there's joy. There's so much joy in this film and friendship and camaraderie and um, in the midst of the, the, trials like that that is important too that is radical too to show you know i i, I looked for every moment that i ca that i could to have full body laughter and joy when i'm with my brothers because you know that's what binds them that's what keeps them in the room that is what has sustained us it is not this never ending worship of our own pain of our own uh, difficulties in this country. What has sustained us is joy. What has sustained us is passion and 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 black brilliance. And you know they are rallying around a young king in Cassius Clay. We all see something in him, you know, that that reminds us of ourselves, and then some. So there's so much celebration on that night. After all, he's the new champ. And so if he could be the champ, you know, what am I capable of? What is he showing these these young kids? And so anyway, that's a galvanizing thing. You know, that is something that could get us through the long days of shooting. And that is something we wanted to put out into the world. Mm -hmm. Eli, do you have anything further to say on that point? I mean, yeah, no, I think I think Leslie nailed it. I think it's about, you know, celebrating the moment. I also would just, I guess one thing I would just add is that I think we were, um, at least for me, I was really passionate. And I can actually say, I think for everybody, I think I was really passionate and completely um, had the complete responsibility and understood the responsibility that I was playing Cassius Clay, you know? So I didn't really have... I, I thank Regina for being Regina because I didn't have the luxury of being able to look at things from 50,000 feet and trying to like have the bigger, grander scope of how it all, you know, fits into the story of today and yesteryear. And I was playing Cassius Clay and I needed to nail that because that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. And I know Leslie singing Sam Cooke, you know, Jim Brown is still alive. Like these are huge legacies that are on, you know what I mean? That you're carrying. So for me, that's all I was thinking about all the time from beginning to end. Yeah, and to pick up on that, Aldis, I heard that when the camera stopped rolling, sometimes you could hear a pin drop and the hair on the back of your neck would stand up because it was, you were all together, you stayed on set a lot, you didn't just walk off to your trailers. There was a real camaraderie there. So, I mean, that follows that. <laughs> well, while we, while we wait for Rob to come back, um, uh, can you still, you got me still? Yeah, we got yeah. you. All right, cool. Um, I'll just, you know, I'll answer his last question as well in terms of, you know, coming to it and thinking about where we were in the year and all of that. You know, I this was a, a message uh, that spoke to me personally just because it's a message that I've been, you know, a conversation, you know, grow up with kids is, is since we were kids, you know, we're having this, we're living this, you know, a lot of people stopped and realized what was going on in 2020 because they were forced to sit with it. But 2020 is every year for black people, right? Let's not forget Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, you know, Mike Brown, Philando Castile, Sandra Bland, there's too many names, too many. This is the, Emmett Till. This is every year for us. The rest of the world just woke up to it in 2020 like it just popped up like, oh, so like now we have a grander opportunity with a film like this to share 
this actual conversation to a place where people can understand. And that's the true power of it, because now you see what we're going through. Now you see that it's not just a game because you don't really live this reality. You get to observe it, but now you get to actually understand it. And that was truly genius about the way Kemp wrote the script. And the thing that I love about it is that we're also dealing with four men who are coming from different perspectives on how to get to the same goal, but they're still figuring out how to get there together, right? So they're working together, figuring out how to actually work with one another even though they got a couple bumps and bruises on the road they still come together so it's about real unity it's about brotherly love it's about understanding what their responsibility is to their people and they get to talk about it debate about it fight about it a little bit but also have fun with it laugh about it enjoy it because they understand at the end of the day they're working for a higher grander purpose which was the same purpose that we carried into making this film yeah what Regina bring to this? What, what was the first thing she told you when she had you together as a group and she yeah. said X and what was X? In other words, don't go over the top with rage, uh, maybe, I don't know, or uh, let's really... Uh, 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 like it, was, moment. Uh, it was, it was, Regina understood the tone. Like, so everything you saw and felt from the movies, everything that she brought to it, her vision, her her choices, her team, you know what I mean? But she understood tone and she knew that these men had to, uh, to show and exhibit real vulnerability in order for us to understand where they were, to understand that they're human beings and go beyond the image that we see of these Titans that we actually know them to be, right? We wanted to show real human beings. So she understood how to work with us individually because, you know, we're all four different actors with different problems processes about how we're coming into these men and she has so much patience so much wisdom so much guidance and it was really just again understanding the real message of the film and 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 going on tone there are moments where we are allowed to be mad and allowed to be full of rage and there are moments that are quiet where we're allowed to be more in you know insular and just on trying to figure things out. Sometimes we're a little lost and it's okay to be lost, but that was the thing is she made it okay for them to be vulnerable and at fault in order to show how great they actually are. I think she brought, um, with exception, I agree with everything Al just said, but I think she brought a, um, a spirit of collaboration and, uh, you know, like, like, uh, like exceptional leaders can do, um, she brought out the leader in each one of us and you know we 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 all knew that we were holding it up together and uh so it just created a real um uh, a real ensemble you know we we became a, a, an ensemble pretty quickly yeah i mean i um the first thing she said to me <laughs> i'll say the first and last thing she said to me because I, I mean i love regina you know Dearly, is she, this movie has changed my life. Um, and so for this opportunity, I'm forever grateful to her. Um, the very first thing she said to me after we had our table read, she called me and I was extremely excited because I was like, I killed it. You know, in my mind, I was like, I got this. And she called me up and she said, so we got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> you got <laughs> called <laughs> out by teacher. <laughs> by like, my comment is like, Whoosh. You know, I was like, okay, like, I want to lose your confidence. I want that bravado, but we got a long way to go. And, yeah. and, and you know, I couldn't go into all the different ways that she taught me and brought me along that journey. But at the very end, my last day of ADR, we were both walking to our car. She was actually walking across the street to get a sandwich and I was walking to my car to leave. And she turned to me and she said, I wasn't sure if we had a movie or a film, but I know now that I've seen this cut we have a film. Wow. We have a film. And I, I was like, you know, it was Richie King talking to me. So I just didn't say anything. I was just like, you know, praise God. I got my car and I was like, okay, I'm excited. And I was, I remember being hyped for the rest of the day, just knowing that she was that proud of what had been produced and that she felt like she had gotten the vision that she had in her mind of what it could be, that she felt like it was going to get there. So, you know, that's a little story for what it's worth. Rob, uh, one more question for each of us here. Um, well, I wanted to just talk about a couple of moments, but particularly the way the film ends with that rousing payoff we get at the end where the change is going to come, I found it really immensely satisfying and, and moving. Um, and I was wondering, Leslie, how it felt to bring that song to life, that iconic song to life, and effectively kind of have the final say in the film as Sam Cooke. 
um, you know, it was a fair amount of pressure. That's like the weird, a weird thing happens as an actor when you read a moment like that, you know, Eli might've had the same, same moment when he saw like, oh, we got to do, you know, these fights, we have to reenact these fights, you know? <laughs> um, you, you're, you're, the weird thing that happens is that you are very excited by the challenge and the opportunity and you're also terrified. You're also like, let's put that off for as long as possible. But the day had come and um, I didn't really, I don't know, I didn't really know what I was gonna do. I didn't really have a plan so much. You know, it's, it's like, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see it, but I, you know, the day had come. Anyway, in the moment when we, when we went to shoot it, all of um, everything, I don't know, rose up it, it, within me. All the research that I'd done, all the time that I'd spent with Sam, and then all the time that I'd spent with these brothers you know, because so much of my Sam I found in relationship to these other brilliant actors playing these brilliant men. So I don't know that the whole experience was alive in me on that day. And I was able to, um, uh, at the very least, do something that I was not ashamed of, you know. And then what's on the screen, um, I know is uh, film is such a collaborative thing. So I know what's on the screen is is Regina and Tarek, our editor, and the sound design, and the, you know it's all of those elements, and and you know the the way it has been put together. I didn't, I couldn't see, uh, I didn't see that gorgeous shot of Eli of Cassius, excuse me, Muhammad at that point, you know, on stage, that beautiful shot. I didn't see that until the film. I didn't see Aldis shoot the scene with the reporters around, you know, I, I so, I, you know, the, the film, what Regina gave us back, you know, she gave us back something that was greater than the sum of our parts. You know, she, she gave us back something beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's my, here's, here's my final question. Are we gonna uh, Nothing right. in Hollywood ever oh. goes according to script, ever, ever, right? So <laughs> what went wrong? It could be funny, some funny incident that went wrong or an improv moment where just something was disastrous and then you went, you know what, that's pretty good. We should keep it in the show. Or, or craft services doesn't show up one day or a set falls down or Leslie, you're out there singing and you accidentally tip over a table. <laughs> I mean, was there anything, you know, any moment from the movie behind the scenes that we don't see that is just a good story? I mean, to be honest, I don't really know if anything did actually go wrong except for like weather. I mean, there was one day where we lost some time because the rainstorm was coming in. So we had to just shoot a scene on the roof. And basically we were running back and forth between the stage and the roof. Trying to get <laughs> like, look, we got a cloud coming. We got like 30 minutes. Let's go get this little clip. All right, cool. Run back to the stage, get the rest of it, wait for the cloud to pass get back you know it was people hustling back and forth between you know an exterior and, and interior uh set but aside from that everybody was like really buttoned up because brother we ain't had no time um yeah in fact we were losing we were losing you yeah that was the thing we were we were losing we were gonna lose, we were gonna lose aldis to shoot aldis had to shoot something kingsley had some to I gotta shoot go. something yeah we uh, this movie is uh, called one night in miami but it could very well have been called a new day in America, because a lot does change after that. I remember uh, living in the Midwest as a white Irish boy of Republican parents, seeing the uh, Muhammad Ali uh, uh, press conference live on TV, and my parents turning to each other going, oh my God, what's next? To them in their mind, it was like, uh, Cassius becoming Muhammad was uh, an escalation in some crazy way in their mind of mm -hmm. things getting worse instead of this man, you know, finding mm -hmm. God in a new way or, or. How, how old were you then? Uh, I'm 66 now. How old would I have been then? <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's even know. I'm, uh, I'm anyway, I'm thank you all. How you felt about it. How did it make you feel? I don't know. Uh, I was 
uh, scared of the world. I mean, I was uh, living 10 miles from Cleveland where Watts, uh, mm-hmm. our downtown area, was burning because of racial riots. Uh, I had a draft car uh, with a fairly middle number. That meant I could be hauled over there any minute. Uh, the world had gone from Eisenhower and, uh, you know, all this sweet red America to, to, to we didn't know what. At the atom bomb was, was, had just gone off. A sputnik. Uh, it was terrifying time to live because we mm. never seen anything like it. And now we had a little box in our living rooms that showed us everything. And it was. Imagine wow. the terror that black people had to live in in that time. That's yeah. real. That's real fear. Yeah. But you so. guys have made and made a great contribution to mm-hmm. that progress moving forward because this is a movie that will be remembered and will be honored duly in award circuit. Congratulations on your success. Good luck to the awards, Arita. Take care. Be well.